Hey everyone, Houston Math Prep here. When we calculate the derivative, remember that it gives us the formula for the slope on that function at any x value. And now as we've started to learn some shortcut differentiation rules to where we don't have to use the limit definition to find the derivative at a point anymore, if we want to know the slope of a tangent line at a specific x value, now we can simply use some of these shortcuts and find the derivative and plug in that x value into the derivative to find the slope at any x value. So let's say we wanted to find the slope of the line that is tangent to f of x equals 2x squared minus 5x plus 1. We want to know the slope of the line tangent at x equals 2, so at this point over here. So if I want to find the derivative, that's going to be easy. These will be power rules for each of these. So if we look at the derivative, f prime of x, power rule says the 2 multiplies out front, so I already have a 2 here, that becomes a 4. The power goes down by 1, so we just get 4x here. If I move on to the next term, x to the 1, if I pull a 1 out and multiply out front, that would still be negative 5. And the power going down by 1 for this x term would give me no more x's anymore. The derivative of this last term would be the derivative of a constant, and we know that's 0, so we'll leave off the plus 0 here. So our derivative, our f prime of x, is 4x minus 5. And remember, that's the formula for all of the slopes everywhere on this original function here. If I want to find the slope at x equals 2, I will plug in 2. So in my function notation, I'll be saying I want to find f prime of 2, right? What is f prime of x when x equals 2? Well, we just plug in 2 for x, so we say 4 times 2 minus 5, which would be 8 minus 5. And so we get the slope on this function here at this point is actually 3. If we take a look at a picture of that, you can see through this point here we have a slope of positive 3. Let's say that we wanted to do something additional and find the entire equation of the line tangent to this function at this x value. So not just find the slope, but actually the entire equation of the line. Well, if you look, we already know the derivative at 2 is 3. So we already know that the slope of this line, we'll call it m, is equal to positive 3. And if I have a slope, then if I additionally knew a point that this goes through, then I could find the equation of the line. Now obviously it needed to go through x equals 2, and you can see this point here is 2 comma negative 1. So we also go through the point 2 comma negative 1. Now if you weren't sure about what x value this was and you didn't have a graph, you could just take your 2 and plug it into the original function, and that would give you this y value, right? If you plug in 2 for x here and here. So we'll make a note here, remember that when you plug the x value into the original function, that will give you the y value. If you plug in the x value into the derivative, that will give you the slope at that point. Okay, so we have an m here, we have a slope. We also have a point, which a lot of times we call x1, y1. And just from algebra, once I have a slope and a point, we can use the point-slope equation, which says that y minus y1 is equal to m times x minus x1. So if I plug all that information here, y minus y1, y minus negative 1 would be y plus 1, equals my slope 3 times x minus x1, which is x minus 2. Now you can leave it this way, or you can get it in you know, slope-intercept form if you like. So you might additionally then say this is y plus 1 equals and distribute your 3, right? So you get 3 times x, which is 3x, and 3 times negative 2 minus 6. And then if we subtract 1 from both sides, we'll get the equation for the line through that point at x equals 2 is 3x minus 7. So we can see here our line has a slope of 3, but additionally now we know that it has a y-intercept of negative 7. We'll do another example here. We want to find the equation of the line tangent to a function 4 over x minus x, and we're going to find the tangent line at x equals 4. So we'll find the derivative of this. That will tell us information about slope, and then we will plug in the actual x value that we need once we get that. Now remember that we can think of 4 over x as let 4x to the negative 1, right? Reciprocal as a power there. So our derivative, when we take the derivative of this term, we might think of it this way. The negative 1 comes out front, we get a negative 4, and then the power decreases by 1, so we actually get x to the negative 2. And then the derivative of negative x, this is really just like x to the 1, so 1 comes out, we still have negative 1 there, and then the power going down by 1 gets rid of x there. So we have 
our f prime of x equals negative 4 x to the minus 2 minus 1. We could also write this first term as if it helps us negative 4 over x squared, right? Remember, negative powers are reciprocals. So now that's f prime of x, and I should be able to find the slope at x equals 4, plugging in 4 for x. So we'll say f prime of 4 is equal to negative 4 over 4 squared would be 16 minus 1. We can think of this as negative a fourth if we want to reduce it. Minus, if I create a common denominator, one would be 4 over 4. And so we would get a slope of negative 5 fourths. Now that's just the slope part of the line. We want the full equation of the line, right? So I have my slope, but I also need a point that it goes through. So m equals negative 5 over 4. Let's go ahead and get the point at x equals 4. So when x equals 4, we want to know the y value. And when we want to know the y value, remember we plug that x value into the original function. So in other words, f of 4 is equal 4 over 4 minus 4. Well, that's 1. 1 minus 4, that would be negative 3. So we're going to use the point 4 comma negative 3 that's on this graph to find our equation of line. So we'll use point slope, so y minus y1 equals m times x minus x1 now. And this is my x1 here, and this is my y1. So y minus y1, y minus negative 3 would be y plus 3, is equal to negative 5 fourths. x minus x1 would be x minus 4. And if I distribute the negative 5 fourths, then we'll get negative 5 fourths x minus negative would be plus. When I multiply these, the 4 will reduce the 4 there, so I just get 5. And then if I go ahead and subtract 3 from both sides, I will get y is equal to negative 5 over 4x plus 2. Here you can see a graph of our original function. Here is that point 4, negative 3 that it goes through. This is a tangent line through that point with slope negative 5 fourths. You can also see that it has a y-intercept of positive 2. There's our plus 2 right there. We'll do one more example with tangent lines. This time we're going to focus on finding places where we have a horizontal tangent line. So we want to find the point or points on the equation. We have y equals, or f of x equals, x cubed minus 3x plus 4. We want to find the places on this graph that have a horizontal tangent line. Horizontal tangent line would mean we want to find where the slope is equal to 0. That's a horizontal line. So what we'll do first is find our derivative, and then we'll figure out where that could be 0. Let's find our f prime of x first. So f prime of x... These are just power rules, right? So here, x to the third, the 3 comes out front and multiplies, so we get 3. And then the power goes down by 1, so we get 3x squared for the derivative of the first term. For the second one, we have 3x to the 1 here. The 1 comes out and multiplies, so we still get negative 3. The power going down by 1 just leaves us with no x's left. And then the derivative of this last term, this is a constant, so derivative of that would be 0. So we have the derivative, f prime of x is 3x squared, minus 3. What we were doing before with this is we were saying at a particular x value, let's plug in and find the slope. Now we sort of have opposite information, right? I know the slope I want. I want a slope of 0, but I have this formula. I need to figure out at what x values, right, this slope is 0. So what we want to solve is then 0 is equal to 3x squared minus 3. This is the slope formula we want to find when it's 0. So now we just solve this, right? I could go ahead and divide both sides by 3, and that would give me still 0 over there, and I'd get x squared minus 1. I could factor this or maybe move the 1 over. Let's go ahead and do that. So if I move the 1 over, I would get 1 is equal to x squared. And then to get rid of the square, I could root both sides. Now remember, when we root both sides to solve, the side that was not squared gets plus minus. So actually at positive and negative 1, those are the x values that have a slope of 0. Now it says find the points, so we have x values, but we still need y values, right? So we know our answer is going to be 1 comma something, 
and negative one comma something, but we don't know the somethings. So we need to go find the y value. Remember the way we find the y value is to plug into the original function, right? Plugging into derivative gives slope, plugging into original function gives y value. So let's do that. So let's say f of one using this x value of one. If we plug in one cubed would be one minus three times one plus four, so we'd get 1 minus 3, which is negative 2, plus 4 would give us positive 2. So at 1 comma 2, that's a point on the graph, and we have a slope of 0. We have a horizontal tangent line at that point. Let's do the same thing for negative 1. f of negative 1. Negative 1 cubed is going to be negative 1. Minus 3 times negative 1 would change the sign to plus 3, and then still the plus 4. So negative one plus three would be two plus four. That gives us six there. So at one comma two and at negative one comma six, we have points on this original graph here, this function, and those points have a slope of zero. They have a horizontal tangent line. If we look at the graph here, you can see here's my graph of x cubed minus three x plus four. At one comma two, we have a horizontal tangent line there. And then at negative 1, 6, we also have a horizontal tangent line going through the function there. Okay, thanks for watching, everybody. We'll see you in the next video.